Hey folks, um, back again after a while. Um, I know my last couple of videos weren't really like <clears throat> per se no fab content related, but um, anywho, I'm uh, facing some really strong urges right now. Um, and, uh, you know, images in my mind, that sort of thing, stuff from, you know, fantasy and such, but um, a lot of it's boredom. Some of it is like the same old anxiety or, you know, um, whatever you want to call it related, you know, emotional downturn, but, uh, I'm enjoying having, you know, that eight hours a day or so, five days a week, uh, work schedule right now. I get up between like 4.30 and 5 every day and typically put in like a mile in the morning running and then take a shower and get dressed in my, you know, work clothes, which is basically just street clothes because I'm just doing assembly and, um, uh, they don't really require a uniform or anything. Um, you know, and then I drive down there, get there between like 6.50 and like 7.05 or so, um, and I just go sign in and start working, and, um, you know, I just aim to get, was it, through the first, like, three hours, 15 minutes or so, and then we have lunch, and then I aim for the next, uh, two hours, and then it's like a break, and then finish out the day, get the work done. And, uh, you know, it takes, um, takes my mind off a lot of other things in life, and I'm making money, so I'm happy with that. But, um, definitely been getting, like, the, you know, visualization of fantasies coming back. Um, part of me kind of, part of me kind of wanted to go back to some of that stuff, um, but, you know, that's just kind of part of life. You know, once you, once you know about PMO... It just kind of sticks with you to a certain extent. Um, you can weaken it significantly and make it such that uh, it's not something you act upon, but I have all those memories, and especially like the, the last content I viewed, which was the stuff that was, you know, in reality the strongest for me because um, while it was having to do with a certain fetish of mine, um, it wasn't one of those like... Um, truly like abnormal fetishes it was just like okay I like this kind of girl as opposed to something that you only really get if you use pornography heavily and then you know you kind of go off the rails in terms of your morality or ethics or taste and that sort of thing it wasn't anything too weird I don't want to go into because you know it's triggering to, for some folks um, and it it'd be a little bit uh, maybe slightly triggering for me I mean I'm not saying that if I talked about it specifically um, that it would, like, you know, set me off, like, oh, five minutes later, I get back home from this walk out here, and I'm, you know, looking the stuff up, per se, but, uh, dwelling on something like that kind of gives it energy, and gives it, uh, force, so to speak, in, in, one, in one's mind, so, I'm not gonna get on that too much. It does somewhat relate to a certain girl I kind of had some feelings for, um, who was not my girlfriend, but, um, it, you could say, I guess, a couple of them, in fact, but, uh, and some really strong emotions and strong memories from the past, but, um, yeah, like I said, I'm not going to give it power. Anywho, uh, a couple of things I wanted to cover other than that was, um, I wanted to give a shout out to, you know, Handsome Virgin, I think that's his name, um, as well as anyone else who's, you know, commented on or liked my videos. I know I've lost a few subscribers, but um, that may just be due to the uh, slight change in my content. I know I uploaded like about 20 videos for my travel uh, travels, you know, over in Morocco, and um, the last couple of videos weren't really per se no fap related. They were just kind of me talking about my job and just you know life update that sort of deal. Um, but those you know those folks who have liked, commented, subscribed, um, even those who did you know unsubscribed, they were they were only subscribed for like a day or two. Um, you know, it still it still helps, and um, really appreciate the comments, especially the um, Handsome Virgins, his latest ones. I will get back to you on that, um, respond to those comments, but just uh, just really been tired, you know, because um, before I started working, it was just mostly like the, for the most part, I mean, it's as far as living at my parents' home for now, um, the usual schedule. You know, sleeping in late, staying up at late, late at night. A lot of that having to do with um, my mother getting drunk or falling and hitting her head and having to take her to the hospital and things of that nature. Um, and stuff with my sister, having to, you know, make sure she was alright and 
helping my father out and whatnot, you know, it, it just kind of threw off my sleeping schedule. So, you know, I was in that sort of summer mode, if you will. And then I get this job and, you know, I, I like it. It's a, it's a pretty decent job. I just assemble skateboards essentially um, and just, you know, package them up and have them, you know, sent out. Basically, you get orders of skateboards and or the customer orders of skateboards and then we assemble however many they need. You know, if it's a, if it's a department store and um, they need it to sell or have, you know, 50 or 100 or 200, however many um, skateboards on the racks, then, you know, we assemble. 50, 20, 100, whatever, and uh, package them up, and then, you know, they get sent off to the customer, so, um, yeah, I like that, but it's been a bit of an adjustment, because um, I have to be up really early, you know, relatively speaking, and and that means that I have to even, I, I would ha I'd have to be up probably around 5, maybe 5.30 to get to, to work on time if I wasn't doing this morning run. Um, so, and then I have to get up at 4.30 or 4 in order to get out running because, you see, I had to drive an hour to get to work, so, um, you know, on time, on time. So I have to adjust everything for that, and it's been a bit of an adjustment, you know, kind of tiring. Um, I come back home around 4.30 and, you know, kind of in a zombie mode, and then maybe later on I somehow get to sleep for a few hours, mostly because... Either my dad's out in the family room, he's been woken up by my mother, and he has the TV on really loud, and he tries to doze off. Or my mom comes out and just is banging around and making a lot of noise, and, you know, I kind of go into hyper-alert mode because we've had enough incidences in the middle of the night where she's gotten, you know, roaring drunk and then fallen over and, you know, cut open her head or, you know, by hitting the ground really hard or a table or what have you, so then it makes it very hard for me to sleep, and I suppose these kinds of things are in part a lot of why, you know, the uh, PMO urges are coming back, that whole desire to escape from my anxiety-ridden life and uh, environment, and go off to a world where, you know, I'm on my own, I'm alone with the hot babe or whatever, and, you know, as a result, because... I'm with this hot babe in this PMO fantasy, therefore, everything else in my life must also be fallen into place. It must have also fallen into place. I must already have my act together, you know? Such that I have my own place, I have my own car, I have a high paying job, I'm fit, you know, rip, you know, 5% uh, body fat, lots of muscle, you know, and I have the social skills, and, you know, I've, I've been able to quote unquote snatch that ideal woman out of, you know, out of thin air or out of the crowd or what have you and you know I'm doing my thing you know that sort of deal so that's probably one of the biggest reasons why the urges are coming back but um so let's see oh third and final thing given that you know I updated you you folks who you know whoever cares really um updated on my life uh a shout out to some folks and now I'm gonna finally I'm gonna finish this up with something that it really um I think it's been something I've been meaning to talk about as far as like PMO is concerned because um it's sort of an emotion that I've gotten whenever I've watched any of that stuff or a fapt or so. And it's been one of the most uncomfortable and painful feelings really. But I'm gonna call it the cuckold feeling or the cuckold feel, or the cuckold emotion, or the cuckold reaction. And it kind of covers a whole set of feelings of insecurity, inferiority, um, hopelessness, loneliness, um, rejection, being disliked, etc. And it's this whole sort of feeling of like, you know, it's like... It's like watching the woman that you want to be with, that you're attracted to, that you love, that you desire, watching her have sex with some other man, you know? And that's essentially what so much of PMO is about, you know? Um, you might try and find some content that makes it seem like you're the one, you know, having sex with her, but the reality is you're not. It's some other man, you know? And you might try to imagine that you are that man, but every time I've gonna watch that because it's like especially the stuff that um 
This is the stuff that's really summed up an actual real life, you know, desire I've had, um, as opposed to something that was, you know, you could say PMO fetish, you know. I've had that that feeling just like it's been amplified, you know. It's like I have it in day to day life, just like so many guys, you know. That's the whole feeling of, for lack of a better word, being the beta male, you know, that you're you're waiting there on the sideline and hoping that the hot girl gets done with her alpha male bad boy and then she'll maybe give you five minutes of attention, whatever they may, you know, manifest as. But, um, you know, it gets amplified by the PMO usage and I hate it. I absolutely hate it, but at the same time, every time I've relapsed, every time I've gone back to that, even though I'm 170 something days now, hard mode it's like some part of me you know is thinking like you know this is the only time I'm gonna get to have this you know ideal perfect dream fantasy come true you know and build pretend like I'm with that woman and you know I'm her first and she's my first and even though she's she's so hot and attractive and all that and desirable that you know she chose me of all people you know of all guys and It's one of the reasons why I've gotten onto NoFab, because as much as it sucks to have to live with that feeling, you know, in all likelihood, like, the vast majority of women out there have been with some other man already, and may, you know, in fact, look at you as just another notch on their belt, another number to, you know, check off, or, you know, or a box to check off that they've been with a guy like you, check, check that off, you know, as they progress in the road through life. I would rather deal with it in the manifestation that it takes in real life it comes and goes it shows up here and there but you're not necessarily going to de be dealing with it every single day it might be there in the back of your head but it's not going to be amplified to the extent that when you're watching pmo you know you know it's like i know these girls i've liked you know that a lot of them have been having sex and in many ways it may <laughs> many ways great sex with other men you know but um i'm able to contend with that far more when you know obviously when i'm on nofap i'm not there seeing these pictures these videos and imagining oh this is what it's like for this woman you know that i'm attracted to that she's having this kind of sexual relations with some man you know who's you know got that five percent body pa body fat you know six pack you know can squat and bench 300 pounds you know has 300k in the bank you know each year you know etc 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 high status you know the right degree all that kind of stuff like it's a heck of a lot easier to contend with that reality because it's not you know being blared in your face you know when you're when you're not uh when you're not watching pmo you're not doing that whole thing and, um, yeah, I'm kind of walking around here on some of these trails. But, um, that's one of the things why, even as hard as it still is in many ways, you know, I'm, I'm sticking to the path. And it does help to get this off my chest. And I'm sure, you know, if any of you folks have issues with this sort of stuff and you've been thinking about doing NoFab, I'd say, you know, you can vlog about it. It definitely helps me. But, um... Yeah, that's that, that whole cuckold feeling. That's one of the things that I, I really, truly hate about PMO. And one of the biggest reasons why I'm on NoFap. Because I can definitely lessen it significantly if I'm on NoFap. Because I'm not, you know, I'm not getting the image in my, in my face, you know. I'm not having to sit there in the corner and watch, you know, that thing occur that I don't want to see. That I, that I wish, you know... Um, hadn't happened or wasn't happening or wasn't going to happen and um, you know I can be out here I can be out here on my own alone in the wilderness for a while and all those things are miles away whereas if I was watching PMO I'd be like right in my face like hey 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 look at me look at this look at this you know you wish you were that guy, don't you? You wish you were that guy, don't you? You know, when you're not that guy, or maybe you're on your way to becoming the kind of guy who could be, you know, snagging that kind of a girl, but you're not there yet, you know, and the frustration is building up, and 
you're in your 20s or your 30s and you're just not feeling like you're ever going to be there, even though maybe one day you will. And, um, you know, if that's the case, you're going to be that guy who's able to, you know, oh, how, how they put it, catch a dime, I guess. Um, you know, you know, you need to put your nose to the grindstone and become that guy, become that uh, guy that's in the top, you know, 10, 20 percent, whatever, of, of the dominance hierarchy of, of men, you know, be that alpha male. So, definitely makes it a lot easier to be on NoFap, because, you know, it's like, I know I'm frustrated with a lot of the stuff, I know a lot of us are frustrated with, you know, the whole process of, of becoming that guy. You can get that ideal girlfriend, or as close to ideal as possible, because, you know, no one's perfect. We, we all know in reality that the stuff doesn't exist, that PM1 makes it seem like it does, but it really doesn't. Uh, but, you know, to, to, be, to be as close to that ideal as possible and get as close to that, as, uh, that ideal as possible, we know we need to put in the work, and being on NoFab definitely helps me do that work, because, you know, like I said, I know I feel the frustration, but going and watching porn, fapping to it, as much as it might temporarily take the edge off and, you know, give me that rush or what have you. I know I'm going to come back to reality afterwards, and it's not going to change. You know, I'll be even more frustrated, you know. It's kind of like, it's kind of like getting stressed or anxious about a homework assignment being due, you know, and deciding to go fap to, you know, to do PMO instead of getting your homework assignment done. When you rationally, logically know you got to do the work in order to get the results, and that's really the only way out of the stressful, anxiety-inducing, you know, situation you're in. you gotta, you got to work through it. So, I don't know how many of you feel that feeling, that, that, that cuckold feeling. And I know the word has been shortened to a slang, you know, cock, and it's been used so many times to different folks to basically label those who don't agree with them on something political or philosophical to the point that I think in many ways it's lost its uh, original meaning, you know, lost that, that value that it had, that uh, almost that usefulness in describing, you know, something or other, but um, if I remember approximately, it means something along the lines of a man who has an unfaithful wife or girlfriend or, you know, relationship partner and is essentially willing to accept that and live with that and not do anything about it. He doesn't have the the courage to stand up for himself and you know say I'm not gonna take this, I'm not gonna, you know, be in a relationship with someone who's uh who's uh, cheating on me or um who sees me as, you know, uh second option, you know, backup option or what have you. So, or, you know, the whole, excuse me, as the, as the provider, protector, as opposed to the um, truly desirable man, you know, or mate. And, um, you know, like I said multiple times, the PMO usage does amplify that for me. So, I'm really, uh, I'm really glad that, you know, NoFap is actually a community now and there's a lot of support out there and that I'm on the, you know, NoFap journey. And, um, hmm kind of feels like, even though I haven't relapsed, I haven't looked at anything, I haven't edged, fapped, whatever, that in many ways I'm coming back to, you know, ground zero in a sense and having to like kind of restart the process in so far as my state of mind has returned uh, back to the to back to where it was back when I was um, first starting out, you know. Something has to do with the environment that I'm in, but uh, I suppose as long as I don't relapse, you know, it's kind of a useful, helpful thing to revisit because, um, you know, all these addictions are just kind of covering up underlying problems, and you need to continue, you know, continue, yeah, continue the process of bringing them up and then resolving them, and you know, you clear those blockages out of your life. So, um, still have to deal with a lot of insecurities and shortcomings in my life and myself, um, whether they're perceived or real, and uh, as some of you all have to do, I feel. You know, if we're really going to make NoFap something that's life-changing, and uh, if we're really going to get out of this funk that we seem to be in. So, you know, whether we've relapsed or we're still steaming on ahead. So, anywho, that's a big weight off my shoulder. Shoulders, excuse me. <laughs> um, so, yeah. 
Thanks for watching, folks. Thanks for taking the time out of your life to, you know, see my content. Uh, this, is, this will be an actual NoFab video, so it's good I've gotten back to that. Um, I will finally do a weigh-in again. I've, I've run, let's see, three, four, five, seven miles in the last week? Seven or eight, something like that. I, I, I uh... I really, really want to do six miles a day, but, you know, three miles is hard enough, um, given, you know, how tired I usually am at this point. And I missed one day, and then two of the other days I only did one mile. Um, did one mile this morning. I'm going to go out and do those two miles, make it, you know, make it uh, a done done deal uh, in a bit. I might have some coffee beforehand just to wake myself up a bit. But um, I did weigh myself in, and... Last time it was like 189.4, then I weighed myself and came up with 185, and I was kind of like, you know, that's that seems a bit much, and even if, even for water weight, and then I weighed myself two or three more times and then came up with 187. I'd like to actually do a video where I show that, but the situation at home is not stable right now. Um, I don't want people yelling in the background while I'm trying to, you know, videotape. But I'm going with 187 right now, and that's after less than a week of running. I've lost two pounds. I'm most likely water weight, but still I've gone, well, more like two and a half. What gone down from 189.4 to 187.0. So uh, I want to keep up that rate, get down to 180 and then, you know, aim for 175 and so on. Ideally, I want to get down to 165 because I think that will drop me down to like nine or 10% body fat. At least according to the calculator I was using online, um, if I can get a smartphone up and running with a, with the app on it, I can use my body fat scanner when I get you know when I get uh, up north again. So, anywho, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for likes, the comments, these subscriptions. And I'll see you folks around. Bye.